What's up, Greg, and welcome back to another episode of trying to find the worst iPhone game in the world. I had a lot of fun making the last video, but more importantly, I realized just how many terrible games there are on the App Store. Apple likes to pretend it's all just these like super polished, high quality games on the App Store, but if you just look slightly below surface level, it's just all garbage. It's all the strangest games you've ever heard of, these like ridiculous knockoffs, and that's where I wanna start today. Let's just search a popular franchise franchise and see how many knockoffs come up for it. Let's try Grand Theft Auto. Okay, first off, we have all of the actual Grand Theft Auto games first on the list, as you would expect. And then we get down to the games that want you to think they're Grand Theft Auto, like Real Gangster Mafia Vice Town, Open World Gangster Game, Gangster Town 2. Jeez, there are so many. There's like hundreds of these. A grand tough guy in Miami? What makes him so grand? The tough guy is grand? I love that he has security written on his back. Security for who? He starts fights with people and then he becomes security for him himself. He's like, I gotta protect myself. These psychos are trying to hurt me. <laughs> Why is he standing like that? That's a tough guy stance if I ever saw one. Don't mess with me, kid. Fuck around and you'll find out why. This app includes Crime Simulator, beautiful Miami crime style landscape. I've always wanted to visit Miami for their beautiful crime style landscape. Interesting rap hip hop music. You can tell whoever made this game just has like no real life ties to like any of this culture. They're like, hmm, the rap and hip hop music is very interesting. Download a grand tough guy in Miami for free and win the mafia war between gangster bands. Bands? Back the fuck up, Tony. You know these are our streets, all right? And the only way that you're taking over this side of town is if you out rock us. Real. Okay, grand tough guy in Miami is getting downloaded. Let's try another popular franchise. What if we type in Spider-Man? We got Spider-Fighter, Spider-Fighter 2, Amazing Rope Police? Open World Rope Hero. Super Rope Hero. So many of them have rope in the name, it's almost like they think people searching for a Spider-Man game might be searching like, uh, who's the guy that shoots rope? Who's the rope hero? Oh, I love that guy that shoots rope. What was he bitten by again? A radioactive cowboy? That's right, Cowboy Man, who shoots lassos out of his wrist. Okay, this is interesting, Gorilla Hero. Super Superhero game. This game seems like it's trying to copy like a million different games at once. First off, it's a gorilla. It's like King Kong, but he's red and blue to be like, no, he's Spider-Man. He's the rope guy. But also it's Grand Theft Auto, but also the bad guys are zombies. <laughs> and also the gorilla actually isn't blue and red. He's like a human being with like a chain on. Oh, but sometimes he is blue and red and he is swinging from rope. Hello, are you crazy to play superhero games? This superhero fighting game or Crime Simulator Gorilla Rampage game. This sounds like it could be two drastically different games depending on how you play it. Superhero fighting game, you can, you know, take down villains, make the world a better place. Or Simulator Gorilla Rampage game. You can be just a wild gorilla and fucking tear the city apart. All right, I am downloading Gorilla Superhero game. Okay, this could be kind of a fun change of pace. Not so much a knockoff, but still in the violence realm. Kung Fu Boy against bullying. Kung Fu Boy practiced the the Kung Fu and some other martial arts to get ready against bullying. Okay, so it looks like it's a game about a kid who's getting bullied and he learns Kung Fu to combat the bullying. He doesn't say like, mm, maybe I need to turn to like authority figures at my school to help. He says, I need to learn how to kill these bullies. Oh, okay, you get to go to the tournament. What is this needle button? Are we taking steroids? Actually, I don't know what a lot of these buttons are. Maybe this is a pin for like uh, pinning up your costume to make it look better, but then you've got like, oh, the first place button. Stand on first place. Give me the trophy. I win first place. All right, this one looks fun. I will be downloading Kung Fu Boy Against Bullying. The president. The boss has arrived in office. Okay, this looks fun. It's another kind of like simulator game. You can choose whether you want to be a man, president or a lady president. You can make new laws, like everyone should do the chicken dance. And there they are, everybody doing the chicken dance. Did I also make a new law where everybody has to either be a guy with a beard in a green hoodie, a milkman, or a girl with a star on her shirt? Make OnlyFans illegal. Tap to slap? What the fuck? Just another one of those presidential duties, you know? Guy comes into your office, asks you to make something illegal, and you just 
smack the shit out of him. No! I like that website. Pick a law and they will feel your wrath. <laughs> These people are gonna feel my wrath, baby. I am downloading the president. Okay, this game has actually been suggested to me a few times. It's called My Horse Prince, and I'm very interested to try it out. It looks like some kind of romance game, but the love interest is a horse with a, hu a person's face. I guess that's just kind of a theme of this series so far is that I just have to do a game about horses and a deeply unsettling one at that. Will you be my owner? There stands a horse with a handsome human face. So it, okay. So it is a horse. It's not like a person who got half transformed into a horse. It's just a horse with a human's face. Is this a dream or a nightmare? Clearly it's a nightmare. It was there, she saw him, that handsome horse. Do you want a carrot? Gameplay includes items appear with time, tap items to get points, points are determined by energy level. These are not the things I wanna know about the game. I don't care if I can tap items to get points. I wanna know why there's a game about dating a horse with a human face. Oh good, cleared levels are automatically stored in the album. But what about the horse? Why does this game exist? And who the the heck is this little guy? I want to make lots of memories, he says, as he stands there looking completely different than both the other characters in this game. I guess there's only one way to find out, folks. I'm downloading my horse, Prince. All right, gang, we have a variety of interesting games. Let's head over to the PlayStation. Welcome to the PlayStation. This is where I play my games. It is time to play the games. First game, Grand Tough Guy Miami, baby. Let's see what this game is all about. Okay, what kind of interesting cityscape has this dropped me in? I've got my character here, the security guard, who is standing with the absolute toughest stance I've ever seen. And just when you think you're getting ready to start peacefully exploring the world, Asshole. <laughs> this guy calls you an asshole and squares up for absolutely no reason. I was walking away from him. I don't know what I could have possibly done to make him upset. Maybe he was expecting me to compliment his cool tough guy posture. But regardless of why, I had to figure out how to fight immediately. Which was admittedly harder than I thought it was going to be because of the two buttons they give you to fight, only one of them works. The kick button just does not work. Doesn't do anything. He's not- he won't kick! <laughs> kick, motherfucker! Do kick! Okay, well, I guess I killed him. Is this guy gonna try to fight me now? Yes, he is. Is he gonna try to fight me? Oh, shit. Yeah, the whole beginning of this game for me was a disaster. I immediately got beaten to the brink of death by this guy, who continued to call me an asshole for the entire time he was kicking my butt. <laughs> And then this guy came out of nowhere to finish the job. After this, you're directed to your very first mission, which is to help your friend hide his drugs. So you navigate through the map of Miami, which I must say, game devs, you really outdid yourself on the accuracy of this one. What is that? Mountain? Is it mountains? Ah, yes, those famous Miami mountains. That's the crime landscape they were talking about. Those mountains are criminals. You captured the crime landscape of Miami perfectly, from the, like, two blocks of suburban neighborhood to the perfectly square right angles of the coast. I mean, I have to say, really made me feel like I was back in Miami, baby. Now I have a little weed butt. Bing bong. So, stash place one. I'm going to the next place. Oh, I just stashed it in the ground? Ah, uh, the life of a drug dealer. Driving around to various parks in their neighborhoods, burying weed with their bare hands. I may sound like I'm being sarcastic, but I genuinely don't know if this is something people do. So look, I don't need to tell you that this is a poorly designed game. I mean, you have eyes. You can see what the NPCs look like. The game mechanics of this game are trash. They make trying to do almost anything impossible. Riding a bike. Oh my God. Please. Driving a car. Nothing works right in this game, and it is made so much worse by the ads. This game is full of ads. Sometimes you go into an ad while you're next to a dead body that you've just killed, and during the ad, the dead body comes back to life and starts attacking you. So you come out of an ad, and you're like already almost dead, and this guy who you thought you killed is the one responsible. Also, sometimes the game just decides to teleport you in the middle of an ad? Where am I? I was not over here before the ad started, was I? Now, all this makes getting around pretty difficult, and truth be told, if I wasn't recording this video, I probably would have stopped playing this game long before I got to this point. But boy, am I glad I didn't, because if I had, I would have never discovered the joy that is the music in this game. That's right, the interesting rap music. 
fucking chicken sound. Stop your chicken sounds? Anywhere in chicken town. Anywhere in chicky town. Stuck in fucking chicken town. Stuck in fucking chicken town, man. I can relate. These are the sounds of Miami. Every time I go to Miami, I swear to God, all I hear is, Oi, mate, you better stop making your bloody chicken sounds before you get bloody killed. But by far the most annoying detail of this game is the hospital. If you lose any amount of health in this game, the only way to get it back is by going to the hospital. Even if you get knocked out, you respawn with like pretty much the amount of health you had right before you died, which is nothing. So it's really in your best interest to go to the hospital and heal yourself because if you get knocked out a certain amount of times, you actually die and then you lose all the progress you've made in the game so far. There's just one problem with all this. The hospital is very hard to find. Okay, so the blue star that I thought might be the hospital is actually a jet ski, it turns out. I couldn't find it. For the life of me, I could not find this place, so I spent the entire game doing like every mission with basically zero health. So anytime anybody so much as punched me one time, I just got knocked out. But you know what? Eventually, I figured out why the hospital is so hard to find. W one cool feature about this game is that some buildings on the map don't appear until you zoom in more. Actually, that's a little bit inaccurate. It's not some buildings. It is just the hospital. So arguably the most important building in the entire game, to me anyways, because I had zero health the entire time, does not exist on the map unless you're zoomed in enough. It's hidden. It's like they don't want you to find it. And you know what? I kind of think I know why they don't want you to find it, because you know what happens when you get there and you try to get healed? Is that a hospital? It is a hospital! Let's freaking go! Let's go in there. How do I get into the hospital? No, no, no. Please tell me they did not forget to, like, add this part of the game in or something. Did they forget to program this part? What kind of sick freaks designed this game. Who are you? Where do you live? Comment it below. I just want to talk. After all this, I was able to successfully hide all the weeds and get my next mission. Let's go. Wait, why was I small all of a sudden? Did you see that? But unfortunately, after I was given the next mission, which was just the same mission, but this time with more weed, I died and lost all my progress in the game. Oh my god, I died. You are killed. I, do I get to go to the hospital now? All right, time for the moment of truth. Did I lose all my progress or just some of my progress? Hey, bro, I want to work in your gang. Oh my god! You need to hide drugs and stash. I lost all my progress because I didn't go to the hospital. Because there is no way to get in the hospital. And after this, I was pretty much fed up with the game. Man, fuck this game. So I went to the only place that I knew I could actually count on. Let's go! Whoa! You know what? Maybe this game's not so bad after all. I'll see you guys later. It's time to learn kung fu and end bullying, bitch. Kung fu boy against bullying. Why does he look so concerned when he's punching the punching bag? He's like, is this how you punch? I, I don't know. I don't know. Help. And of course, before you get to do anything, it gives you an ad. Whoa, what is this game? Nerdy boy? He doesn't look that nerdy to me. Here is the Kung Fu boy against bullying's origin story. We're just at school. We're chilling, not hurting anybody. And a bully comes up to us and he's pissed that we got a better grade on a test than him. And then he just wrecks us. It's a crazy fight, dude. A dust cloud forms. There's like a cat in there for some reason. And that's pretty much where the game leaves us, with us cleaning up the mess that our bully made. And dear lord, what a mess it is. Okay, so it looks like on the left are things I need to do to help this poor kid. So I'm gonna press the locker button. Oh, and I guess fix the locker. The school is gonna make the kid fix the locker? He got beat up. It's a very gruesome story so far. We're like dressing our wounds, our bloody yeah, wounds. And I just wanna know who is running this school? It seems very cruel to me that we got beat up and now we're the ones cleaning up. How is that fair? Where are the teachers? Where's the principal? Where's the janitor? I'm a little worried that halfway through the game, we're gonna find out that that was the principal. He's like, that's right. And I'll do it again. Stop being smarter than me. I'm supposed to be the smartest one here. We go to a kung fu place straight away. I guess we decide there are no adults here that are going to help me. I need to take matter into my own hands. I need to learn how to fight. The first thing our sensei tells us to do... Get a new outfit. He says, get out of those ugly ass clothes, dude. No wonder you got beat up. You look like a dweeb. At this point, we need to talk about this kid's voice because I hate it. The first time we hear people talk in this game, it's just like text to speech voice. It sounds like a TikTok or something. You got more marks in test than me, so what? But the next time we hear him speak, he has this like high pitched elf voice. Like new. Ugh, I hate it. You know what, actually? 
Actually, square up, kid. That's right, I hate you too now. Yeah, I'm the bully now. I'm the kung fu man for bullying. My theory is that they must have just downloaded a bunch of random dialogue from some stock library somewhere and just like tried to make it work in different circumstances. Cause sometimes he doesn't even have the same voice. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. All right, we've got our outfit customized. Now it's time to train. Training consists of this boy kicking this bag while staring deeply into our eyes. Gotta make the enemy uncomfortable. I like it. Then our sensei takes us to a deserted island where the training continues. First things first, let's eat some soup. Much better. Than just water? Yeah, I guess so, man. Where are my parents? I'm eating soup in the desert with a strange old man. Where are my legal guardians? I need help. I feel like I'm in constant danger in this game. There's a battleship behind me. I'm worried that's going to attack. I don't know if it's just a coincidence or it's the training, but suddenly our little kung fu boy has the voice of a man. Do it. 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 He's finally gone through the final stage of puberty. Kung Fu. Breathe in, breathe out. <gasps> that was really bothering me. What was bothering you? What are you talking about? Oh man, I was really wondering when someone was gonna come along and put a rock on my back while I plank. Thank you so much. God, that was really bothering me. Here's the messed up part. Halfway through training, our bully finds us while we're eating with the sensei and he takes pictures of us through the window. And then in the next scene, the pictures are all over school and we've gotten the shit beaten out of us again. This game is ruthless. I mean, really, we're trying to get ourselves out of a bad situation he can't even cut us some slack for like a day but our just desserts might actually be right around the corner because right after this the game presents us with a pretty interesting development hi george my bully get ready for the tournament is he going to a tournament with me am i going to be fighting him in a tournament this is going to be sick that's right we get to face off in a tournament against the bully that started it all and to get ready for this tournament we decorate Ooh, that was really bothering me. What am I doing right now? Why am I decorating this room? I thought I was just packing my bags for the tournament, but then it was like, and put a couch down, put on a weird hat, and some silly shoes. All right, it's time to show this bully who's boss. It's time to use everything we've learned in a series of complicated kung fu challenges that will test our skills. Unfortunately, the game does not let us participate in this part. We just get to watch a cutscene of the two boys chopping wood with their bare hands and then getting into another fight. Fortunately, we absolutely absolutely maul this kid. We destroy him. <gasps> Let's go! I guess that's what separates us from the bullies. Sure, I will beat the shit out of you so hard that you'll wish you were never born, but only for a trophy. I'll only do it in a controlled environment where people are watching it happen, and then I get a big reward and you don't. And to be fair, when I'm done, I'll clean him up. I'll pick the little leaves off of him. I'll, you know, sedate him with this needle. Sure. I'll also stitch his chest shut. Actually a little too graphic. I think we might've gone a little bit too hard on the poor lad, but nevertheless, I'm, I'm happy we did it. I gave myself a medal and took a picture to commemorate the occasion. And then the game informed me that it was all done. Congratulations. Thank you. Game done, is that what it said? Sorry, did I just beat the game? That was it? And that's how I ended bullying. Now I'm going to become the president. Hello and welcome to the Oval Office. It's time to talk about the president. I immediately started this game by making a grave mistake. I clicked don't allow to send notifications. Maybe I should have clicked allow. They might need me for something in the middle of the day when I'm not paying attention. Like if my world is about to get nuked by aliens or something, I'll probably want to be able to be reached. But a good president never admits they were wrong. So it was time to take the oath of office. Why is the person that's in charge of like the oath of office like a train conductor. So this is mostly just a game where you pick between two options, a good option and an evil option. The only problem is the consequences of picking either option are pretty unclear. In fact, it seems like most of the time it's completely inconsequential. Repeat after me. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of president. <laughs> that I will steal all public property. Screw it, dude. I'm clicking that. Ha ha. Nice joke. This guy's just like, yeah, okay, dude. Good one. Can we... Can we keep doing the oath now? That was not a joke, okay? You don't think I'll do it? I already am. He looks down and his train conductor uniform is just gone. He's naked. And I'm starting with these. So I sign my presidential oath. I do a little dance and that's it. 
I'm the president. It should be noted that this little dance is my favorite part of the game. It's actually one of the only good parts of this whole game. He just looks like he's having so much fun. It's funny, it's silly, and the president isn't the only one that gets to do it either. This lady comes into the office to give me a gift, and then she starts doing the dance. When I sign things into law that all my citizens like, they start doing the dance. How sick is that? I never wanted to be president before, but if this is what it's like, sign me up, dude. Call me Joseph Brandon. The craziest part of this game has got to be the public executions. Yeah, no, really. There are public executions in this game. Execute. Old President Dan runs a bit of a different kind of society, I guess you could say. Say one bad word about me, and I will strike you with lightning. I will harness the power of the gods, and I will wipe you off the earth, unfortunately. One of the laws you can sign is that, like, everyone should fight. And obviously the citizens, they don't like that. And they start speaking out, and the game gives you the option to execute somebody. Isn't that insane? This game has such, like, a cute art style. I was not expecting that. I just know that after summoning this lightning and destroying this man, my little guy is at his podium just like and the game appears to get even darker from there Pardon death row prisoners? I robbed a bank to pay for my daughter's hospital bill. Yeah, man, I don't know. I was looking for something a little more light. I think I'm gonna move on to the next game. Hey guys, it's me, your favorite superhero. Rope man. Guys, I don't want to spoil the review for Gorilla Superhero, but I really like this game. Oh, whoa, whoa. What did I just stumble across here? Oh my god, he is getting into it, dude. Yeah, this guy seems cool as hell. And sure, I had questions. Why does he have human hair? He already has fur on the rest of his body. <laughs> He's got like bleached blonde hair. But his dancing put me in such a great mood that I was willing to look past all that. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to do the whole review like this. Is it really hot in here? The beginning cutscene got me freaking hyped. Our gorilla is sitting on a rooftop with his unexplained panda friend when we leap into action to help defeat a bad guy that the police are fighting. And this is when I learned the true appeal of the game. The combat. Is this punching? I can't tell if I'm hitting them. What? What did I just press? Everyone turned into skeletons, dude. Whoa, dude! What the hell? Combat, I guess, is a pretty loose term for what's going on in this game. There is a punch button, sure, and it does a little bit of damage. But then you have this whole outer ring of powers and spells that your gorilla is somehow able to harness. And they're so powerful. Basically a one-hit kill for any enemy. It could be a normal guy, it could be a zombie, it could be this, like, weird purple futuristic BMX rider. Every move just turns them into skeletons. No questions asked. You just push it and it's like, they're dead. They're gone. They've been dead for years. Their bodies decay. I love how this gorilla runs. <laughs> like a little gorilla man. Is this how gorillas really run? That'd be crazy to see a gorilla running around like this in the zoo. I just gotta get, I just got somewhere to be. Maybe they do run like that. I don't know. Can we get a video of how gorillas really run on the screen, please? <laughs> Your gorilla can run, jump, smash, swing from rope, and he can even use said rope to yank people. Whoa. Oh, actually, can I shoot web at people? Gotta yank these fools. Yeah, I am, I'm yanking them. Get yanked. And you can yank people, you can yank them to their death, which is quite frankly how I wanna go. I don't wanna die, but if I have to, make it by a monkey. Make it by a monkey yanking me with a rope. I wanna be walking around my city, my beautiful crime landscape city, and I want a giant gorilla to land next to me and shoot a rope at me, and then he just yanks me. And then de that's just it. Lights out immediately. The last thing I experience in this world is just like a moment of like zooming toward a monkey. Now you might think that having such earth shattering powers would be a constant net positive, but to be fair, there actually were a few instances where they got in the way. I wonder if I can steal this cop car. Oops, I accidentally, <laughs> I wanted to steal a car and I accidentally destroyed the entire thing and everyone in sight. But luckily you actually don't really need a car in this game because the gorilla is faster than the cars on his own. Kind of crazy that they even added cars into the game at all when they're completely useless. Also, even when you do get in them, the gorilla doesn't even fit. And also the cars in this game have that shitty game mechanic where instead of like a joystick, there's just a left and right button for steering as if that's useful at all. I think there's a reason those haven't been implemented in real cars. You're about to hit a D and you're just like jamming the right button. No, get out of the way. Now, unfortunately, this game does get old after a few minutes. As far as I can tell, there's no story in this game. You're basically meant to just run around and turn people into skeletons, which is fun at first, sure. But I don't know, can I turn people into other spooky things like 
You have goblins and witches. Also, the game kept coming up with this pop-up that said something like, explore the world to win achievements. And then it would send you directly into an ad, which was pretty annoying. Explore the world to win achievements. Yeah, that's why I'm doing that. If you would stop showing me these ads. It's like you're mad at me that the ads are coming up. It's like, don't watch these ads, dude. Explore the world. I'm trying. So outside of upgrading your character to the red and blue gorilla, which I did do. Yes! Yahoo! <laughs> Look at the red little butt. There really is no reason to keep playing this game for more than like a half an hour. So, while I will most likely never play this game again, I would like to thank you, Super Gorilla Hero. This one goes out to you, Super Gorilla Hero. Thank you for all the great times, you crazy little ape. Howdy. Yes, my friends, it is finally time to talk about My Horse Prince. Apparently, the second I downloaded this game, it decided it's actually not called My Horse Prince, it's called something else. But fear not, the game is still about a human-faced horse. I know that's why you guys were sticking around. I know what my viewers want. This game kind of flows like one of those episodes or chapters type games. First, I had to name our main character. I thought I was naming the horse, so I accidentally named her Horace. And Horace explains that she recently moved to the countryside to get away from her ugly middle-aged coworkers. I poured so much of myself into my work that my only interaction with men was at the office. An office full of middle-aged salary men nobody would call attractive. The hell? Bunch of old weirdos that literally nobody could love. Okay, so she moved to the countryside to try to find a, a prince charming of sorts. She's on the hunt for some hot guys. And then we meet this guy. This guy owns a ranch where they train racehorses. I don't know why he looks like that, and they never acknowledge it. Dude, you know Horace is pissed right now. She traveled all the way from the city to the countryside to find some hot guys, and then she meets this guy? This, I have to imagine, is the exact type of guy she was trying to get away from. I mean, sure, I don't know for a fact that they look like SpongeBob drew a middle-aged man with that magical pencil and it came to life. But look at this guy. He's not exactly a hot guy. Are you here to see some horses? Oh, um, yes. Well, there's one over there. Go have a closer look. And there he is. Um, he has a human head? What's that? Missy, don't tell me. You're seeing the horse is a man? He got real long when he said that. You're seeing the horse is a man? So it turns out that Horace is actually the only person that can see a human face on this horse. Lending further credibility to my theory that this is not a human with a horse body. It is a horse with a human face. Who should not be pursued romantically. That's just Danny's two cents. Let me guess. Your year of the horse? Yeah, I am. I've heard that weird girls born in the year of the horse sometimes see horses as attractive men. People with the ability are really something special. I don't know, man. It kind of sounds like he's trying to make it seem like a superpower, and quite frankly, I very much disagree. This is a curse. It's not some ability that you can choose to use that somehow gives you an advantage over other people. You're cursed. Every time she looks at a horse, it's some guy. She looks horses in the eyes, and they're like, hey, sorry, but if you gave me that in a game of like, would you rather? I'm picking the other option every time. Anyways, let's talk to this hot horse some more. People with the ability are really something special. Praise, praise. Wish I could get attracted to one of these things. I'm around him all day. Don't worship me. What's going on? Hey, is this guy bothering you? I'll stomp him into the dirt. He's just a tiny little potato, man. Don't worry, I'll use my hooves and I'll kick him into the ground. From the amount of this game that I've played, which admittedly is not as much as I probably should have, I can't really tell if this is supposed to be romantic or not. And honestly, I don't know if Horace knows that either. I think she's working through some very complicated feelings. She keeps saying things like, hmm, maybe I could hook up with this guy. Oh, wait. Oh, no, he's a horse. What am I thinking? He's a horse. Oh, I've been duped again. He neighs and whinnies. I wouldn't say those are the reasons you can't date a horse, but you're on the right track. Outside of how insane the premise of this game is and how confused I am every time I talk to this horse, this game is actually pretty boring. It's mostly just like skipping through dialogue boxes and then playing these weird feeding slash training games where you're either feeding him carrots or having him run on treadmills that he breaks every time he uses one, both of which drain his energy. And the only way to get his energy back is by talking to him, which could be interesting, but the only thing he ever wants to talk about is horse stuff. You like ranches? What do you think of carrots? I don't care about the carrots. I want to talk about hot guys. Call me crazy, but this game did not exactly draw me in and make me want to play more of it. It's kind of wild that they made a game that has such a weird premise that you can't help but want to click on it, but then they totally fumbled in the execution. How could a game about dating a, a man horse be so bland. So yeah, that's it for this game. And you know what? That's all the games. That is all the games I was going to talk about today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Uh, bye bye